you had a photo of you and Kobe together, and you said you were humbled by his presence. How will you personally remember Kobe Bryant? I remember Kobe Bryant as a person evolving, a person always evolving, and as such an iconic fixture of the L.A. landscape. He was someone we all loved. He came when he was 17 years old to the Lakers. I met him when he was 17 years old. And we watched him come in as this arrogant kid, you know, wildly shooting threes in his first game, coming in, you know, and then when he, when he started starting, he didn't want to pass the ball. He conflicted with Shaq. He was wild, but he was always a leader, and he was always bodacious, and he was always bold. And then as his career went on, and he became humbler, and he became kinder, and he started learning how to lift up his teammates, and he started, you know, reaching out and becoming warmer, and like, like um, in all these ways, like watching him evolve. Mm -hmm. And then he retires, and we watch him evolve even more. He starts, he's a storyteller. He's putting out kids' books. He's coaching, you know, girls' basketball, his girls', so his girls basketball yeah. team. And to see him go like this is just devastating. You know, his beautiful little girl, and it's um, like you know, you mentioned earlier in the break. There, yeah. it's 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 just hard to reckon with that. Here's this guy going full force ahead, this life force, this amazing person, and then just bam, he's gone. You know, and um, for me, it's just it's a time of mourning. It's been a time of a lot of prayer, and it really tests faith to like come to terms to understand why something like this happens. But one of the reasons I love sports and love basketball in particular, and I love basketball. <laughs> it, I was at a high school game night before. I love it. It brings us all together. Yeah. Every economic class, every race, every flavor of human being, we come together because we love this beautiful thing, and it's a craft, and basketball is an art. And just like that brings us together and brings us all under this umbrella of this incredible art form that we watch people innovate and take further and further and deeper, so does Kobe's death bring us together. And, it's and we all come together, and we can all cry, and we can all realize that something momentous has happened and that we will never be the same. And in this city, it will never be the same. And so in his, in his life, as in his death, he brings us together, and it's togetherness. And for that, I express gratitude. So, so, so well said. It's notable to me, too, that people like you were so drawn to him. Paul, we know that Los Angeles Showtime, certainly in the magic era, drew in the celebrities. But there were years after that where it was not the center of pop culture for musicians, for actors, the way it was back in the 80s. And then Kobe comes in and you have the Kobe Shaq era. And you knew that guys like the Chili Peppers or anybody else would be there to see you play because they wanted to be there for the Kobe show. Oh, absolutely. You definitely brought the start. This is a continuation of, you know, what Magic did and just it took it to a new level, you know, because L.A. is always about the stars. And when you have a, a star that doesn't shine any brighter than Kobe Bryant, they gravitate toward that and they come to the games and they express love. They want to go in the locker room, take a picture with him. Can you say hi to my son or daughter? I mean, he just people gravitated toward Kobe on, on all levels. So when they asked you to do the anthem at his last ever game, what was your reaction? Um... I was, you know, honored to be asked. For me, it's all about the craftsmanship. Like the thing that I loved about Kobe Bryant. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, comp, it's a very deep and, and, and deep thing, but the craftsmanship, the dedication. Kobe, like the, re the reason that people connected with Kobe so much, it's not just loving a great player. It's an ethos. It's a way of life. It's a guy that got up at 4 o'clock in the morning and worked out every day and focused. And every time, it, like, like I, I watched every game he ever played. Yeah. I watched every game Magic ever played. Mm -hmm. I, you know, since I moved to L.A. in 72, I've watched mm -hmm. every Laker game I could. And to see him do what he did, it wasn't just the heroic moments, the like, you know, beating you guys in 2010, <laughs> losing sadly in 2008, <laughs> but like all those things where I was like, my heart was being wrenched out of my chest and I was thrilled and amazed. But it was every game. It was the regular season game against a terrible team when he bought it. Mm -hmm. And he bought it every night consistently because he loved it. Because the reason that he had the discipline and the worth, it was his heart.
This is love. It's not like some macho jock thing. And I know, you know, it's, it's love and, and it's wanting to honor the game itself and wanting to lift up people. And ultimately, that's what dedication to a craft does. And as a musician, mm -hmm. I dedicate my life to being as good as I can be. Every time I step on a stage, I will sweat blood. I don't care if I'm in Peoria in the middle of the winter and I got the flu and I just played 10 concerts in a row. I'm going to go, go till I drop. Did. Yeah, and do what Kobe did. And that's what he always did. And I just, I respect it. I love it. I'm humbled by it. And I was humbled by him, as I put in that post.